dear Lord, we come unworthily we are, God, but we beg your grace and mercy upon our soul. Please to accept our coming, Lord, and as we breathe your name and talk about your goodness today and your faithfulness towards us, I pray, God, our hearts, mind, body, and soul will come together, for you are the great God of the people who cares and understand. You do direct the universe path direct humans, God. It is for us, Lord, to understand what our personal path is with you and to find our path, to find our journey and ensure that our journey is within Christ's way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by you, Lord. And as we assemble ourselves together to worship, I pray today, Lord, all will be to your glory and to your honor. Bless the, the singing and the scripture and everything that shall be said and done today. Bless the, the team that is leading us into worship. And I pray God will follow likewise and be in the worship. Sing the songs of Zion. Worship the name of the Lord our God. Let all things be to your glory and to your honor, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. morning church I hope everyone's having a good morning so far we're gonna open up with a scripture reading uh, Philippians 4 therefore my brother therefore my brethren dearly beloved and longed for my joy and crown so stand fast in the Lord my dearly beloved I beseech Yodius and beseech Sintich that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good rapport, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to be abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonia ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire, desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Yephidoritus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 
in all things, we have to know how to be content in this life. And by coming to church and worshiping and pouring our house, hearts out before the Lord, that is where we will learn to be content. So this morning, we just want to worship God. We just want to give him thanks. We want to give him praise. So let's really set our hearts and our minds right now on the Lord and leave all other things, all other distractions behind. Wherever they came from, leave them behind. Leave them at the door. And right now, let's set our hearts upon the Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for this time to be here, this time to worship you, Lord Jesus. We are just asking that you take full control of this service, Lord God. I'm giving you my heart once again, Lord God. I'm giving you my mind once again, Lord God, and I'm asking for your forgiveness, Lord God. Forgive me of my sins. I just pray right now, Lord, that you will lead us in worship, that you will be the one leading us in worship, Lord God, and that your spirit will saturate this place, Lord God, and everything right now will be focused on you. Help us, Lord God, to focus our minds, to focus our hearts on you during this time. We welcome your presence into this place, Lord God. Fill this place. Touch all of us here, Lord God. Touch the musicians. Touch those that are sitting down right now. We pray, Lord God, that you will take full control of this service. And we worship you, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for what you've done on the cross, Lord God. We thank you that we can come boldly to your throne and that we can know you, that we can know you personally and have a personal relationship with you, Lord God. That is so amazing. And we thank you, Lord God, for this. So we ask and pray all these things in Jesus' name.
the Lord right now? Do you want to speak that out? Do you want to say right now, bless the Lord? If so, let's sing that one more time. Let's sing. And I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. And I Lord a praise right now. Give the Lord something from your heart. Give the Lord whatever, something from your heart right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this time, Lord God, to gather here and to bless your name as a congregation, Lord God. We ask that you have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As we worship the Lord this morning, let us, let us go deep in our heart and, and see why we are called to worship. Why we are called to praise this morning. Because the Lord God is, is the creator of the heaven and earth. He's, he's, he's Lord of our lives. Praise God. And we want to bow our hearts and just worship Him. Him and Him alone. Hallelujah. Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea, you're Lord of the heavens before there was time, and Lord of all lords you will be, you're Lord of creation and Lord of my life. Lord of the land and the sea, you are Lord of the heavens Vents before there was time, and Lord of all lords you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. Lord of all lords, you will be. We bow down, we bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, And Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea, you are Lord of the heavens before there was time, and Lord of all Lord, you will be, you are Lord, you are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea, you are Lord. Lord of creation and Lord of my life Lord of the land and the sea You are Lord of the heavens before there was 
worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. as we're here today, Lord God. I pray that you touch every one of us as we're here, Lord God. Yes, Help Jesus. us to reach out to you, Lord yes, God. Give Jesus. us the strength to reach out to you right now as we are here, Lord God. And I just pray that you bless the rest of this service. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Smile a while and give your face a rest and let nobody turn you fool. <laughs> Look at the neighbor and say, the neighbor can have a smile. No shame, no shame, no shy. Neighbor can have a smile. <laughs> I didn't say laugh, I said smile. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Raise your hand to the one you love the best. Praise the Lord. Welcome to church, everybody. Give God a hearty welcome. Holy God, Holy Spirit, Holy Son of God. Amen. Welcome all of you. We are delightfully happy that you all could be here today. We all could be here today giving thanks and praise to the Most High God. Ever living, ever faithful. Amen. What a beautiful day to be in church when it's raining on the outside. No better place to be than in church, away from the noise and the cooking and the frying and the baking. Just find a couple hours to come into God's house and focus on the living God and his worship and his praise. Amen. 
If you have your, just after the service today, I just want, we've been preparing for a convention and planning and organizing, and we're able to finally get the, the, the nuggets together, the program together, and I just want to share it with you before you go today so we can know what to expect, but um, so don't run away after the service, just want to go over the program and make sure we understand the our role and responsibility in our upcoming convention. It's going to be great. Praise the Lord. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn to Ecclesiastics chapter 12 and verse 13 to 14. You know what? I would like to take it from my key verses are 12 and 14, but it would be delightfully great if we read from verse 9. To 14. I write Ecclesiastes. And when you find in the, the scripture, please stand if you could. Perhaps it's the only time you're going to stand. And let the spirit get, and let the spirit um, raise you up. Amen. Let the spirit raise you up later to stand and rejoice in the Lord. Feel free to do so. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Let us read together. All right. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright even words of truth. The, word, the words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the master's assembles, which are given from the shepherd, which are given from one shepherd. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. Let me just read a little bit more. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret things, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Bow your heads, please, and let us pray. Dear God, we truly thank you for your words today. You have inspired the wise men you have given Solomon wisdom and inspired him to write these words of wisdom so we may understand our relationship with you. Of all what we have accomplished, we need to hear the conclusion of the matter. We must fear God and keep your commandments, for it is our duty. And we thank you, God, for opening up our knowledge to this episode in our life, that we need to fear you and keep your commandments. We bless your holy name today. Bless all, all of us that we may hear what the Spirit said to us and be wonderful in your sight as you deem it necessary, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The duties that binds a community together are to be the duties that bind us to God. So that is the theme of my message. The duties of our community that bind us together are to be the duties that bind us to God. Amen? So that's the message. You could go home. But if you need a little deeper knowledge, you could stay. <laughs> Tell your neighbor the message. 
When you go home and somebody asks you what the message was today, what would you say? Very good. Very good. I heard that clear. Can you stand and say it, sis? Ought to be the duties, O-U-G-H-T, that bind us to God. Anybody else want to give it a try in such clarity? The message for today? Anybody else hear it clear? If you don't hear it clear, don't stand and say anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you hear it clear like the sister down there who just said, stand and say it. If you hear it clear. If you don't, then I'll If you don't stand, I understand you didn't hear it clear. But if you hear it clear, is there one more person in the house can stand and say it? All right, I have to dig a little deeper then. Okay, so we have one person that hear it clear. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> that somebody hears the message clear and concise. All right, so beneath the duties that ties us to our family, our husband, our wives, our children, our workplace, or our community ought to be the duties that ties us to God. So there is a spiritual and a natural application that we all must experience. Whatever relationship we have with each other, there's also a relationship that we must have with God. In fact, Beneath our social, historical fabric of life and events, we are to consider that there is a God, a creator, who self-exists. We must also consider that he exists in our lives and in the lives of people if we delete God out of our lives, we'll become reckless. And if we delete God of our, out of our community, then the community would be wrecked. Literally wrecked, wasted. So it is important that we have in mind that there is a divine being that brought all things into existence and we are to be in relationship with this divine being. Amen? It's very important we understand that. The moment we delete the concept of that divine being that created us all, then we become as natural trees that we can see even though the trees have spiritual implication because they were spoken to existence by a spiritual God, a spirit being example, Adam and Eve were created by a spirit being and when they move when they disobeyed the spirit being that created them, they were cast out of the garden of Eden. So that spirit being I speak of, we call him God. And why we refer to this spirit being in the context of male, because he is a father. All things come from him. So he is a father. He is considered as a father. God is a father. Without him, nothing. Just like your fathers today. Without a father, there are no children. Doesn't matter if they do the little thing in the lab. They got to be a father. 
that don't figure it out to make it yet. The God will be a father. So God is a father of all things. Therefore, we refer to him in the male as a male or in the concept of male. So when Adam and Eve disobey the divine order of the universe and of humans, they were cast out of the, the immediate garden of God. That was the city of God on earth, the garden of Eden. So God built a city for himself on earth. He probably have a city on the moon, who knows? And all the planets, we don't know. And even if you go there, you won't see because the despair is spiritual. Only earth allowed to show natural things. I don't know if in the other galaxy there are natural beings. I don't know. But we know on earth we are able to see things within our own scope. To other beings, they might not be able to see it. But humans can see whatever is on earth. Unlike if they go to other planets, they may not be able to see all the rich environment. And all those created by the same being that created us. So we are a natural and spiritual being. We are a moving natural and we are a moving spiritual. Hmm. The people at the Tower of Babel... They were, God gave them one language and they were to unite in that one language to serve God so that none would escape worshiping God or the spirit being among us, the eternal spirit. None would escape. So God gave that rising nation one language so they could communicate together to worship him. But instead... They, in that one language, they began to build a space station or a tower from earth, so they want to go up into the heavens. So they communicated together very well. They started it. And this was perhaps the first tower God noticed created before him. And this tower coming up into his heaven was, was very unusual. So God came down. And said, let's go down and see what they're doing. Something is coming up. Into the atmosphere. And God looked down and he said, ah, oh, not good. So he destroyed the first Space station, our station that was built to go up in space. Because that was their intention, right? To build it up into the heavens. God came down and destroyed that first space station. Hmm. You begin to think ahead now? How many, well, how many, any of you here think what would be my next line? What do you think would be my next line? Okay. Well, not only that God came down, he, he we really don't know what God did with the tower. Because the Bible didn't really tell us he destroyed the tower. What he did was to confuse their language, the one language, and gave them several languages. So all the people who were living on earth, or the population of the people on earth were living at the same place. Living together. So they spoke one language. And in that one language they united together to build this space station. So once God divide, gave them new languages. So the group that spoke in understanding of each other. God, they would move away because really they can't understand the other people. So group one, move away with their language. Group two, move away with their language. And group three, four, five, six, whatever it is, however God grouped them up to speak this, these new languages he gave them, they move away into their cohort. And that's how we have so many languages today in the world. God gave them. 
And then if you notice on the day of Pentecost, all those language group of people returned to Pentecost and heard the apostles speaking in their own language so they could understand the gospel of God and 3,000 turned to God. Now today we have a space man figures out, man figured out how to not just build a space station on earth but to actually Move it up into the heavens. Fast speed than I, you could hear me talk. By the time you hear what I said to you, it gone what thousands of miles. Or miles, how many miles gone. These, these, these fast moving space station. And now, instead of building one from her to top, they have a space station station in the atmosphere, above Earth, atmosphere, up there. And they're expanding on it. Now, not only that, they want to move a space station to have resident and moon, and the moon. And not only that, they want to send humans to learn to live on moon. Out of that space station. They figure it out. Or to go higher. Not only with bricks and mortar. But by engine. They can, they're planning to live on moon. So there's a space station. They were, they were trying to sign up the other day. Did it go up yet? It, something went wrong and they have to cancel the voyage. And it, did it, they, they try to get it up yet. Are it still <laughs> they are working on Huh? Yeah, yeah, so they want to go to moon first. And from moon, they want to build a, 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 a space craft that can go now to Mars from moon. And hopefully, they can inhabit Mars with humans. What are you hearing here? That the same God who destroyed the Tower of Babel because humans want to build it to reach the heavens is the same God is not dead. Don't try to tell me my God is dead. Because he woke me up this morning. Don't try to tell me my God is not alive. Because he lived within my heart. Don't try to tell me my God is dead. Because I'm still breathing his breath. That he blew in the first family of the earth. You don't think the same God is watching? What they're doing? I know far they want to go. Don't be kidding, man. The same God is watching. How far they want to go. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what he did with the Tower of Babel. But I haven't seen any picture of it. I have the um, archaeologists, what they say about it. But it's not in operation today. So beneath whatever we are doing, there is a God watching, upholding, and overshadowing. So beneath our duties, we are to understand there is a duty to God. Are we violating God's law and his provision? Are we trying to move out of the space that God gave us in his universe? Are we trying to go further? What is, he, what is he saying about it? What is in his plan for what we are doing to go beyond where he put us to live? We see that in Egypt, the Egyptians were unkind to the Israelites. And God sent ten plagues. Ten plagues. They didn't know. The Egyptians did not know there was a super God. Supernatural God. They thought they had all the gods and all the magic to rule the world. They were the superpower of the world. They, they thought they had it all. But there was a higher God who was watching and saw all the retreating strangers and people who come into their country because of famine. 
You see what's going on in the United States now? All the people who flee in oppression in Venezuela trying to find a home, they just bust them and ship them to places they don't even know where they're going. Is that how we treat people? God is watching. What happened to Egypt? God sent 10 plagues because they were not treating strangers and visitors right. They had them in enslavement. God was watching. What God did, he, he, he raised up a leader and formed him and fashioned him to go down to Egypt and face Pharaoh. Nobody would face Pharaoh so easily. They couldn't even make it through the gate. But this man, Moses, God take him away from Egypt at about 40 years old in his prime and brought him down somewhere else where he could train them as a shepherd to lead starting out with animals. How he cared for the animals. And he demonstrated to God that he can take care of animals. You can take care of people. And once he reached that mature state, God sent him, make him made him a God to Pharaoh. So when he speak to Pharaoh, Pharaoh would shut up and listen. Though he did not respond kindly, because God hardened his heart, because God wants fear to know that beneath what he's doing, there's a higher power. And Moses went down and got the people of God out. Sodom and Gomorrah, the people were living in the dreams of their mind, the behavior uh, and natural realistic behavior before God they were living they became so sinful that two angels visited the city to have a visit with Lot, the Lot's family and they saw these, these two strange men because the angel allowed themselves to be in human form so they could communicate with Lot and they saw these two strange, somebody saw them, not everybody at the same time. But somebody said, we saw two strange men went into Lot's house. And the Bible said, young and whole women and children all went to the house to see who these two strange men were. Knocking on the door to have these two strange men came out to them. And the angels had to blind them and took Lot's and his family out. Beneath everything we are doing, folks, there is a God. It must be in our consciousness at all time that God is carrying us along. Or allowing us to move along. It must be in our consciousness. This consciousness must overrides our natural habitat. It doesn't mean that we are left unconscious, but that the presence of God is very present in our habitat, in our environment. In our workplace, in the schoolroom, wherever we go, God is very present. This divine being, this eternal being, self exists, is very present. Anywhere we go, if we leave from the north to the south, the presence of God is there. From the east to the west, the presence of God is there. Abaka said God came from Teman. And I tried to do a little research on the word Teman. For Abaka, in his prayer before God, <coughs> he was feeling the presence of God or the power of God or the spirit of God coming towards him from the south as he prayed. 
doesn't mean that God really come from the south. God is everywhere. But that's how he felt in his prayer. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Amen. Let us look to Genesis 9 and see something here. Genesis 9 and verse 8. Beneath our community, there is a God. Beneath our duties to our community, there is a God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Genesis 9 verse 8. And God spake unto Moses and to his son with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish by my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, I will establish my covenant. With you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more from the, by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is a token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for, for perpetual generations. I do Set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth. Oh, bless your name, Lord. That the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become, up, become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it. That I may remember the everlasting covenant. Between God and every living creature. Of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah. This is the token of the covenant. Which I have established between me. And all flesh. That is upon the earth. So how can we escape God. When he have. He established a covenant. With humans. All flesh. So good to see you're full of, <laughs> you know, this morning I was going to say, those of you at the back come up there, you're in my spirit, don't trouble the people. <laughs> up here is going to full up soon. So I just follow the spirit. Yeah, so God established a covenant with all flesh. All of us before we were even born. That he will never use water to destroy the earth anymore. Since nowadays, have you heard of the earth being destroyed by water? No. Have you heard of countries being destroyed by water? Yes. Countries just wipe out by water. Tsunami. Am I calling it right? Tsunami. <laughs> just, just move into the, the city. You ever see tsunami just move into Japan, move into Europe, move all over the place and literally wipe out a town. But not the earth. Because every time it's raining or there's a cloud, molecules forms, molecules become heavy and came down like drops of rain. And every time the cloud forms and the rain falls, God's rainbow stood up to remind God don't destroy the earth with water. I, we are not alone, folks. Somebody tell your neighbor I'm not alone. Tell your neighbor we are not alone. There is an unseen eyes that is watching out for our safety. So beneath what we are doing, we are on the floating wings. We are on the, we are on the floating wings of God. And the moment God dips his wing, hurt is gone. So though earth is going through some transformation, environmental catastrophe, what they call it now? Environmental what? Climate change. Though the earth is going through climate change, the place is becoming hotter and colder. 
more earthquakes and floods are happening, God still holds earth and his wings. Oh, glory be to God. Because he made a perpetual. You know, you saw the word perpetual? Perpetual means cannot be broken. The earth will never be destroyed by water. Because God put his own reminder in the heavens by himself to remind him that though it may be raining like crazy and some countries have been flooded and washing away, earth in itself will not be totally destroyed by water. God promises that. And he's faithful. All flesh shall not ever cut off from the earth. Now this is very important. I just want to walk around. This is very important to understand. That all flesh will not cut off from the earth. In other words, there will be always humans living on earth. It doesn't matter of the catastrophe or the disaster are the nuclear weapons that possible may fly out of Russia or Ukraine or Europe for that matter. Humans can never destroy this earth because God promised destroy the earth to a point where all humans cut off. Because God said there will be always humans living on earth. So we are in the hands of God, folks. And it doesn't matter what earth is going through, our human humanity going through change, climate change, flood change, economic change, inflation change, whatever the changes are, we are always under the watchful eyes of God Almighty. Oh, have your name, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. So therefore, since we are always under the watchful eyes of God Almighty, it behooves who we are, we are to serve him. Because he holds our future in his hand. And the way we respond to God determines our future. Dead or alive. Oh, somebody worship today. Somebody worship today. Praise God. It is absolutely important that the spirit and duty to God prevail. Our spirit of duty to God prevails. Because he controls us. And whatever we are doing, he's allowing us to do it. So don't think because humans are now exploring the other heavenly bodies that they're, they're out of God's sight. Are they left on their own? He give us Lent. You ever see you have a dog on the leech? I guess in this country when you're going out with your dog, it's a law you have to have it on a leech. Because if that dog run away and bite somebody, you're going to be sued for a whole lot of money. And some people are going to be loving the return. <laughs> so you got to have your dog on the leech. Well, God have the earth on a leech. And he have everything that inhabited earth and a leech the sea will not go further than it ought to go and I've been looking at this for a while now the lakes, the river, the sea and notice where the sea ends and I look into myself and I say my goodness God stopped it right there because sea is very powerful the sea is very powerful no wonder why Peter said the earth comes out, out of the sea. That is after the flood. It comes up out of the sea. And where the sea stops, that's where it's supposed to stop. It's not supposed to go any further. That end is called a beach. 
and the sea knows its boundary. This is the beachfront. So even if the sea tilt because of an earthquake or, or a tsunami or it rises up high, waves boiled up and run over, the sea always recedes back to its original place because it understands God's command. Even the sea has to obey God. Oh, praise God. Think about the earth under, oh, oh God spoke, the earth cover over in water. Earth covered, the way God created earth, it covers in water. And out of the spirit of God moves upon the deep. And earth comes up out. Oh, praise the name of God. No wonder why they're looking at Mars and say there got to be water below. Because they're, they're studying it as earth in its origin was all water and then this mass land came up so they're thinking and the moon there must be water below and mars there must be water below so they're going to explore <laughs> well god promised he would not destroy <laughs> the earth with water he didn't tell us he won't destroy mars with it <laughs> or the moon so if they go up there and live and start dig up and found water we don't know what may happen so people got to be careful. You're going into divine realm. Make sure you get a good knowledge of it. Oh, Lord. Hmm. God is very much conscious of us. And he understands that we are a natural being with, this, with emotion and survival instinct. God understands that. At the same time, if the natural person's Emotion and survival instinct is taken away. The person becomes helpless and nothing. And God understands that. Therefore, it is absolutely important that we see humans as spiritual beings. Just as natural beings. So I'm a spiritual being in front of you standing here. As well as a natural being. I'm a spiritual being and I'm a natural being. Have you a Lord? We are created. Why are we a spiritual being? Because we were created by a spiritual being. With godly spirit. That can move into action. When the natural ability fails. The natural ability will fail. But as come to 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 to 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout of the voice of the archangel with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall arise. You think they are rising in natural body again? They are going to rise in their spiritual body, their spiritual form. And be caught away to see God in heaven. Praise God. So we're currently living in the natural body and we do everything. We use lotion to heal the flesh. Keep the flesh fresh. <laughs> if you don't heal the flesh, become dry, dehydrated, especially in the winter. When you have to lock inside a hot house, suck out all the juice out of the flesh. You got to get some Vaseline or some lotion and heal the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> have your way Lord so you look well because if you don't take care of the flesh you start to get dry up and look old quick very old but if you get your oil and oil the flesh literally oil the flesh you look young and fresh well just as how we have to take care of the flesh we have to take care of the spirit man and that is done through communication with God and live in God's way. And when this body loses its energy, it dies. But guess what? The spirit shall rise to live its other life. Oh, bless the name, Lord. So beneath all what we are doing in the natural, there is a God, a spirit being that we are hanging on. Be careful, oh, you hung on the wings of God. 
how we have a duty to him. That's why the wise man Solomon said, let's bring everything to, the, to a conclusion. Fear God. Keep his commandment. For it is the all duty of humans. Oh, praise somebody. Bless the name of God. Praise God. Am I taking my time today? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Spiritual. Let's, let's take this. Social coherence and collective conscience is learned within one's community. Can I say that again? Social and coherence and, and collective, collective conscience learned in one's, one's community. community. So, so we, we learn how to work, work together, together collectively. collectively. We learn how to socialize together. We learn that within the community. Every community is different. The way you may socialize in the church community is not the same way you socialize in the work community or community. In every community, there's a way in which people collectively bargain together and work together. And it's called collective conscience. So it is very important when you move into a new community, you learn the community. Take time to understand the community, collective conscience. Spiritual intellectual ability is also learned in one's community. So if, you, if your community is Christianity you most likely will be a Christian or have Christian's characteristics because you learn that. And if you come from another community that knows nothing about Christianity, then you're going to function with that, within that religiosity. I met individuals when I talk about the most I God, they have no idea what I mean. They're asking me, what is that? And I know I have to explain because they have gods too. Many of them. So don't think because we understand the original God. Everybody understand him the same way. So within that community they learn that. Like many people never read the Bible. You'd be amazed how many millions of people never read the Bible because they have their own book. Collective conscience. Now, but... So we learn natural coherence and social coherence and collective conscience within the community. We also learn spiritual intellectual ability in our community. But spiritual revelation comes from God. We don't learn revelation. Amen? Revelation about the eternal spirit, self-exist, comes from God. But in our community of religion, which is not unto the original God, is learned. But the revelation, hallelujah, of the original God, the self-exist God. Now in a community, all of the gods are made by man. And developed by that community. Whether through our, the ancestral paternity our maternity, our father, our mother. Because some community, there's a goddess. Some community, there is a god, lowercase g. Some community, there is a spirit being. And how those spirit beings and god and goddess came about? Because of what the, 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 the father of that community had said. Uh, that original family who is important to the community as said. And everybody grew up in that community, follow that trend. How this, I know in some community, but through studies, how do they get their spirit being? They know they need somebody more than them or out of them. So families go to bed and dream and hoping for a spirit being to come. Once they saw that spirit being, they got up out of their sleep and created the being out of a tree and planted it in the community, lifted it high up. That's the spirit being for that community. You may give it a name. 
And then all the children, all the family that grow up in that community worship that being that is on a tree, carved out of a tree. And that's the spirit being for the community with the name. So all of the gods are created by human. But the God that we serve self-exist. Oh, somebody worship. Amen. Somebody worship. He self-exists and he brings revelation to those who have a hope and mind for him. Oh, glory be to God. When that revelation comes, it supersedes our ancestral spirit being. Our goddess, our God. Abram is a typical example. Living in the land of her. When God came, remember they have other gods. He grew up with his father serving other gods. But when God called Abram and revealed himself to Abram, what Abram did? He packed up all his servants and all his belonging and he left. Because God told him the only way you're going to develop your relationship with me, you got to leave. Sometimes you got to leave father's home and mother's home to understand the true and living God. Somebody worship. Because we are bungled up and tied up in our ancestral culture that we don't even know when the self exists God is calling us to higher heights. John could understand, oh glory be to God, when he was thrown in the Isle of Patmos, in the highland of Patmos, when the Spirit said, come up a little higher, John, and I will show you things to come. How we listening to the self exists spirit being. He reveals himself to us. We don't learn about him in the way we learn about social life in our community. He reveals himself to us. And God just come, came to Abraham and gave him four point blessings. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of God. What are your blessings that God gives you? What God puts in your faculties about him? What you know about God? How are you going to hack it out? How are you going to live out your revelation? Woo. Beneath our daily lives, there's a God. And we are on his wings. We better be careful God don't flip us off. Then we are doomed. We need to still stay on God's wings. Oh, glory to God. God caused me to know him. Through spiritual revelation, conviction, and conversion. That's how we come to know God. Through spiritual revelation, conviction, and conversion, and baptism. That's how we come to know God. Conviction. The revelation of God's righteous judgment. And I must do something about it. God is right, I am wrong. That's the conviction. What do you do about that conviction? Turn to God or move away from him. Those people who move away from God are considered sinners. Those people that move to God are considered righteous. Children of God. Are the righteous children of God perfect all the time? No, you're not. But you are the children of God. Because you come, you answer the conviction God is right, I am wrong. Conversion, repentance. Godly sorrow for sins. Asking God to be merciful for your sins. Turn away from them and start serving him. Don't, don't plan out your perfectionness before you come to God. Because that's what a lot of people are doing. I got to wait till I get married first before I, I, I give my heart to the Lord. It never worked. Well, it doesn't always work, let me say that. Because I grew up with a lot of young people in my age group where you witness to them and say, I got to become Christian first. I got to get married first before I become Christian. And then they got married and they still haven't turned their heart to the Lord. So don't wait on any set parameters to meet to serve God. Come as you are. Come as you are. Single, divorcee, widows, married, come to God. Praise be the name of God. 
Don't plan your perfectionist. That's, I, I believe if I plan life this way, I'll serve God perfectly. No. It's not possible. You're going to mess up even when you come to God. But because God is merciful and we are floating on his wings through creation, he will bear us up. Amen. Don't try to be perfect. Come to God. Serve God. Open to his revelation. That's why there is a spirit in man that is able to receive and to communicate divine truth. God sends you the truth. Receive it and apply it to yourself. Glory to God. He supersedes our ancestral goddess. Our ancestral gods, our spirit being. When the Holy Spirit of the Almighty God come to us, there's an immediate transformation. And you know it. And you feel it. Oh, praise God that you got to move. Oh, praise be the name of God. Move from your current settings into a higher setting. Oh, praise God. Glory be good. I am down and drowned, but God is pulling me up. Hey, amen. You count me, you knock me out, but God is taking me up. It is, it is in that nothingness we will find God. It's not when we think we know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but it's when we don't know nothing. We may be very smart, have good intellectual ability. But if you just lay that at God's feet, you begin to get divine revelation that lifts you higher and higher and higher so you can live for God. And you know that when you fall down, when you messed up, you can get up and say, Lord, have mercy. I'm still your son. Isn't what happened to Peter? You would think Peter would be perfect being in the immediate company of Jesus. But he wasn't. He was ready to go to, to go to war, have a violent temper, that when the Roman soldiers came to take Jesus into sacrifice for sin, he pulled his sword out and cut off the high priest's servant ears. And Jesus looked at him, what kind of spirit is that? Take up back the high priest's servant here and put it on. I said, don't do it again. Jesus knew in his heart he was going to deny them. And he said, no, Lord, I won't do it. Yeah, yeah. Before the cock, 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 throw, crow three times, you're going to deny me. Listen, this man was a Christian. And when Jesus taken into custody and was leading to the sacrifice, and a little damsel saw him and said, oh, you are one of Jesus' disciples. He said, no. And Jesus looked over and said, I told you. So don't think we can perfect it out our path before we come to God. Just come to him. Because God looked on Peter, Jesus looked on Peter after his resurrection and said, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. I know I messed up, but I love you. And Jesus said again, do you really love me, Peter? He said, yes, Lord, I do. And Jesus asked him the three times, do you really love me, Peter? And he broke out in tears. Lord, I'm weak, but thou art strong. Somebody worship today. Serve the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Beneath our circumstances, we are on the wings of God. God is bearing us up. Would you stand with me, please? Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord, we thank you today. Thank you for this message. Thank you for your words. Thank you for the people that come out today and worship. Beneath our circumstances, we are still on the wings of God. Beneath our communities of duties, there's a duty to God. Whatever we achieve in life, there's still a duty to God. Whether we are great or small, God is counting on us to love him and to keep his commandment and to serve him. And when we fall short, he's still giving out love that we may come to him. We thank you, Lord. May you save some soul today and bless people for your kingdom. I ask this mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Is there anyone here today that would like to turn your life over to Jesus? Make a commitment to the Lord. You may have made a commitment before, but you've been challenged so much that you just feel dried up and weak and you want to recommit your life to God today, I invite you to come for prayer. There's no shame in stepping out in recommitment to God. Would you come and let us pray with you this time? Just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me going through and you understand that God is beneath your situation beneath your circumstances holding you up but you want to reinforce that faith in God today I invite you to come oh Lord I come I come just as I am though will receive just uh, oh thank you Jesus with welcome pardon do you need pardon from God today whatever the situation you need God to pardon you I want to pray alongside you this hour oh praise God spot. Oh, Lamb of God, I come.
Praise be the name of God. God bless you and keep you in perfect peace. Know unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless unto the only wise God. To Jesus be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. The people say, praise God. Glory be to God. Just be seated for, just be seated for a few minutes and we are going to be updating you with the convention plan here today. Good to see uh, Simone. Good to see you. How today? Praise the Lord and the children.